Oh, hello. Oh, hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Look at you. I love it. I'm all glammed up because I just did my camera ready webinar where my makeup artist, she live on Zoom did my makeup. <laughs> oh my gosh. How yeah. did it go? I have it, to see it. <laughs> it was good. You have to watch the replay because it was so much fun. I just spilled coffee on my stuff. Um, anyway, it was great. So she took me from like bare face to this and she used my makeup like on purpose. Like you don't have to, unless you want to, you don't have to go buy, right. you know, like professional grade stuff. Like let's just go through Susan's makeup bag and use her makeup. And it was like, I was like, oh, I've been using that wrong. Like, it was like, <laughs> the whole thing was so funny because it was like, like, Kana being like, oh my God. Like, I'm like, it was oh. in an amateur hour. Yeah. An amateur makeup hour. <laughs> right. It was really, really fun, though. So, so oh anyway, my God. thank you for doing this. You're such oh my a fan. gosh. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. The highlight of my day with this hair oh you look beautiful oh i love that top todd baker you know ted baker yes love so good it's perfect on you thank you i love it so um so i will i actually already pre-recorded the beginning you know all the other segments to this and the um the theme is go get it. And Love I it. talk about how you're a real go getter. Um, and, and, but we absolutely for the interview can talk about what you suggested we talk about, um, which is money and all those things. Yeah. It's all related. Right. It's all related so, to getting it. <laughs> so getting it. We don't get it. All right. So you want to just start? Sure. Sure. Okay. All right. So welcome to the show, Jessica Miller. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. So I'm always delighted to talk to you. You're always so generous with your knowledge and your experience. And I've had the privilege of watching you create a super successful coaching practice. And one of the things that's been fun to watch is that you've really owned and come into your own and understanding your superpower around a certain topic. So what is it? So my superpower around really making money regardless of the circumstance. That is one of the things I'm so passionate about. And I do think it's a superpower. <laughs> it makes me so excited because, you know, I love talking about money and I love making money. And I really love though, getting women talking about and making money. And so what have you noticed in the work that you've done with women around money is the biggest mental obstacle that people typically have? Yeah, so that's a really good question. I think one of the biggest obstacles is we as women, I think we see that there are people out there making money. So there's a certain part of us that believes that it's possible to make money. Right. I think some part of our brain sometimes might think that those people are special snowflakes like they're a special right. people that make a lot of money. And although they think that it may be possible, they don't necessarily believe that it's possible for them. Mm -hmm. and, and Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, please. So I was going to say, I agree. Like, I think people hear inspiring stories, like even in Rich Coach Club, when I interviewed you inside Rich Coach Club and talked about the money that you made very quickly in 2020, I know that there were people because they emailed me who were like, yeah, but, you know, mm. fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them is that people look at someone like you and they're like, well, she has something that I don't have. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? I say that is totally untrue. Mm -hmm. I mean, a big part of, so, you know, my story, I was working in corporate America for a long time before I became an entrepreneur. And the number one thing that kept me stuck in corporate America was this belief that if I left corporate America, like it was because of corporate America that I was making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And if I became an entrepreneur, I was going to be shuffling along the streets in my bathrobe, dead broke. Like it was something that was out there, something that I didn't have um, that kept me really stuck there. Mm -hmm. And when I became an entrepreneur 
and I started to make money again quickly, I started to realize this is not something that is bestowed on special people. It is actually a belief in your ability and belief in your ability to do that. And when I realized that, I got so excited and passionate to help everybody I know do that same thing. But it really starts with your belief. It starts with that moment where you realize that all the crap that your brain is teeing up to you about what it means to make money, what that looks like, who you need to be, which is somebody, something out there is totally untrue. And we are like living that lie, especially as women, I hate to say it, um, for a long time. And it's just total BS and we don't need to live there. You like, it seriously made me tear up listening to you. I mean, I'm like, I just had my makeup done for this (laughs) webinar (laughs) and I'm like, okay, don't cry off your lashes. (laughs) It's really moving to hear you talk about it in the way that you phrase it, because it is true. I think that, I think that those of you listening, if you've been successful in some other realm, you are probably telling yourself some form of a lie that you're successful in that realm because of something that's not you. Um, You know, whether it's your location, who you're married to. Um, whether or not you have children, um, whether or not you have the quote unquote right education. And what's really interesting, and, and listen, I have worked with entrepreneurs for over 13 years and the ones who make money are the ones who tell themselves nice things about money and making money, period. Totally. totally. Yeah. Another thing that comes up, I think a lot for people is time. Mm-hmm. Like time and money seem to be one of those things that yeah. pull people back. Like, do I not have enough time? Do I not have enough money? And I think plenty of people who are listening to this right now in the circumstance, mm-hmm. you know, they may have less time, quote unquote, than ever. And right. I definitely did. I have two little children and a husband that works and a full time, you know, coaching career. And there's very little, quote unquote, you know, expendable time in my day. Mm -hmm. But I have had more success and I have felt more passionately about helping people now than ever. Yeah, it's interesting how, and we're recording this in July, 2020, um, in the time of COVID. And um, you, along with probably three-fourths of my listenership, have found themselves homeschooling their children, which Mm -hmm. is not necessarily a job you maybe thought you would ever have Mm -mm. (laughs) and and everything that goes along with that you know having everyone home um and and you're right that money and time so wealth and money wealth and time um wealth and health like all those things are so intertwined in the work that we do and it's interesting that people will say, oh, I don't have that thing she has, or I don't have, okay, maybe I have what she has, but I don't have the time she has. Yep. And it's, it's interesting because it's not, I mean, the way I talk about time is that it's not the amount of time you have. It's the energy and attitude you bring to the time that you have. Mm -hmm. Because there are, I mean, you can prove in a court of law that some people have less free time than others. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. And I think to that point, I think it's also the story you tell yourself around the time. Right. Um, when I when we first started with the pandemic and everything was really crazy, I really had this thought that if I was single and in quarantine, I would have all this time to build my business. Right. And and although as a coach, I'm like, that's a thought. <laughs> there was a part of me that was like, but it's a true thought, Jess. Like they have more time. Mm-hmm. But that thought was holding me back so much in the beginning, because if I tell myself I don't have enough time, that's the result I will create. Right. And regardless of the actual quantity of time, if I tell myself I've got what it takes in this time, or this is all the time I need, those are the results that I create. And part of me also extrapolated that to my clients. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of my clients who want to make money don't have all this expendable time. So guess what? They don't want to waste the time either. So they've got just as much time as I do. And it just sort of syncs up. Um, But the stories are powerful. They're so powerful. 
Yeah, it's, I always explain it to my clients this way. Like I work a condensed work week and it's not the amount of hours. It, it really is the output that you can produce in those hours that's created from your thoughts and, and your energy and all those things. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if, if you're going on vacation, which no one is right now, hopefully because of COVID, <laughs> but if previously think back to when you could freely travel, <laughs> right. Um, right? Like you get so much shit done mm -hmm. right before you leave town because there is a drop dead date. Like there is no, like the plane is leaving, the car yeah. is leaving, the boat is leaving. And if, if you think about like, if you have all the time in the world, like I could drag my work week out to six days Mm -hmm. But if I condense it to four, it's like, I can get the same amount done. I don't tell myself I have a, you know, because I take fun Fridays. I don't tell myself like, oh, I can't get as much done as her. I tell myself I get more done than most people because I take fun Fridays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you the book on getting, uh, efficiently getting things done in a short amount of time. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and I, and I do realize like, um, you know, that, that people have different work styles and all those things, but it's just like a mind bender. It's like, yeah. it's like, I used to think I needed five or six full work days to be successful. Mm -hmm. And it's not true. Yes. Yes. It's not true. And I think um, I learned that from you too, by mm -hmm. watching you and working through understanding what you did and understanding how you thought about it. That made me understand that you weren't the special person mm -hmm. that only could do that. And I couldn't, right. So even if I didn't think I was a time bender when I started, I started to realize like, that's just part of my thinking too. Like if Susan can do it and I can watch her and she's emulating that same thing with money, right. Then I can do it too. It starts to change your belief in yourself mm -hmm. and that changes your results. And so it's, it's awesome to be in the company of people that are leveling up in that way that you want to. And I think being an example of that is so important. What do you think, and, and going back to making money, mm -hmm. um, and one of the sort of toxic blocks people have is like, oh, well, she has something I don't have. What are some other common things you notice your clients tell themselves about making money that you're able to help them understand is just not true? Oh, yeah. Well, I think um, one of the big things is I think people think that there's like this finite amount of money in the universe. Um, and that also making money is this like zero sum game. So if mm -hmm. I make it somehow it's detrimental to somebody else, like I make some, you have to make less in order for it to equal out. Mm -hmm. And so there's this part of our brain, I think, especially for givers and, and women and people who want to help others that that sort of default mechanism is like, you're taking something away from someone else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or that you need to like get money from your clients. Like money is something that you create out there in this external space. And right. in reality, it's not. Money is created in your mind. It's created with the value and the energy you put out into the world. And I think part of that energy magnifies when you believe that your growth and your success allows other people to succeed too. Right. Um, and for me, the result that comes from that thinking and not just thinking it, but actually having the result of watching your clients do that, like really knowing that you can create that for other people mm -hmm. that just like everybody up levels. It's so good, but it's such, I think of, we're not taught that it, it feels like we're taking something away from other people. And I think that's another huge fallacy that we have. Yeah. It's really interesting. And I mean, it, Part of it, I think, with women is we're taught not to talk about money just in general, but for women especially, we're taught that you're we're not great at math. Mm -hmm. Like we're not we're not good at money. We're not great at math. Like don't worry about it. Right. Um, you know, depending on your generation listening to this, you a lot of women were told like your husband you know, it's a very cis hetero mindset, but like your, your spouse or partner needs to worry about that, not you. Mm -hmm. And even if people didn't say those words, it's implied in gender bias in school and in, I mean, just like job, I'm sure you experienced it in corporate. Um, 
And so it's this attitude that we somehow breathe in from birth that money is unsavory. We don't talk about it. We're probably not going to be very good at it. Mm -hmm. And we, and somebody else, like we clock in and clock out and somebody else pays us for our time. Yep. Versus, you know, versus like money is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Money affords us the, the, um, not just our lifestyles, but the impact that we can have on the world. Yeah. So what's been the most fun thing about earning more money for you as an entrepreneur? The most fun thing. Oh my gosh. Well, I personally, I I just think money allows you to create so many things. And I think as you grow into the income you're producing, the creativity around what you can do with that, you, you take on this, this sense of limitlessness. Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain it, but, um, you can get really creative and you can also, I think you can, um, what's the word? You can come into parts of yourself. You didn't even know existed before you had this medium to be able to play within. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's in your business or your personal life. I mean, there's things that I've done with my family and with my clients and just with even sharing opportunities with other people that have just raised my spirits and raised my vibes in ways I could have never experienced without having access to creating that through the energy of spending money. And, you know, it's, it's true what you said. Sometimes money gets a really bad rap. And in this world that we live in, it is the exchange. Right. And so if you embrace that for what it is and you think about all the incredible things that you can create through that medium and, and think of all the amazing people that you know, and imagine if they had all of the money that they wanted to create all of the amazing things they wanted to create, like not only would it be incredible for everyone on earth, right? But it would just be so much more fun. <laughs> totally. I, I mean, I, I was talking to somebody about this earlier. All my sessions and interviews are running together, <laughs> but um, someone I was talking to today we were talking about the fact that it that it's it's not just like fun to say like oh i made x number of dollars this year which blew my mind it's what you can do with that money yes and the impact that you can have and how fun that can be you know mm-hmm. it's fun to me to give a scholarship to a female entrepreneur mm-hmm. it's fun to me to donate to female political campaigns. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fun to me um, to be able to um, pay cash for college for my kids, for example. Although it's so funny, um, you you were like, hey, we, this is the exchange that we have. And I know that you said that because there are plenty of people listening who, who will, you know, are like capitalism is bad, and all those things. Mm. And I like to call myself a conscious capitalist, which my daughter Cora says does not exist. She is a hundred percent a socialist. <laughs> and, and I'm always joking with her and I'm like, well, this capitalist is paying cash for your college. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, but however, 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 um, I do think that there's a misunderstanding, um, in general, because she has educated me about what socialism actually is, mm-hmm. um, versus communism. But, but anyway, we could go down that whole rabbit yeah. hole, <laughs> but currently right now, the exchange that we have is like money. It, that is the currency. Right. And, um, it's not going to probably change in our lifetime. Um, although my daughter would argue with me about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> so if it, so then as women, we need to function within the society in the most healthy way possible. And so let's make all the money yeah. so that we can create all the change that we mm-hmm. want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also want to add that, you know, there's so many amazing things, like all of the things that you said that we create, um, with our money and that exchange of energy amongst people. And really when you think about money, it's a piece of paper and it's the value that you give to it and the thoughts behind it and the energy behind it. You could have money that you use for really good things and money you use for really bad things. And Mm -hmm. the wonderful thing about it is you get to decide 
what you want to do with that. And even the things that sometimes we can feel like um, it may be shallow or whatever, but there are things that fill us up as individuals and we need to embrace those things. Like I remember the first time I went to this beautiful spa and I bought a friend of mine, my best friend to the spa with me who had never gotten a massage and she had never been to a place like this. And I watched it change her perception of even what it meant to go to someplace like that. I remember her saying to me like, oh, I always thought that people who were like shallow jerks went to places like this. Mm -hmm. I like really love you and I value you and you go to places like this. And I thought, this is what it's all about. So if it's like fancy makeup or shoes or spas or what, whatever it is that raises your vibe into that flow, that you then can share that with others so that it raises theirs in whatever way. And you don't exactly know what that impact is going to be, but it's the energetic alignment, right? It's how we interface. And sometimes it can also take people who are really out of alignment Mm-hmm. and help bring them into alignment because you've shown them that it's really about them, right? It's about them creating it and their experience of it. And what they choose to do, like the power is within you to make money and make good things in the world. If that's what you want and you shouldn't hold yourself back, you should Amen. embrace that. Amen. And I'm all for, I mean, those of you who listen to this podcast, y'all know Y'all know I like me some dynasty vibes and (laughs) like, shoot, like right now, uh, whether or not, if you click in the show notes, you can watch the video. I'm wearing a crazy dynasty dress. I've got my face all done. Um, You know, I love, I love jewelry and shoes and bags and trips and all that stuff, but it doesn't, I love it because of how I feel, like not because I think I need any of it. Right. Right. Like, and I fully embrace it and own it. And instead of being a minimalist, I'm a maximalist. Like (laughs) I have the t-shirt. I (laughs) am like, I more hashtag more. Um, but what I love the most, uh, like real true wealth comes from, you know, that feeling of abundance and like having, having an abundant feeling like I have the money I need, the time I need, the presence I need, mm-hmm. the idea and creativity and being able to flex those things, like all those things make me so happy. I, you know, mm-hmm. and money is just sort of the icing. Money is sort of the, the energetic, to, you know, tool or exchange, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. I think it lets you step into the you that's you too, right? It's all that stuff together. And it's the ability to create all those things because you know you can and you're not blocking it because it's money and you're not blocking it because you have a thought about it. You get to do as much or as little as you want. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the beauty of it. So what are your um, money goals for the rest of 2020? Here we are like halftime. Mm-hmm. So my money goals is to continue to grow my business. Really, you know, I was thinking a lot about this. Like, do I have a number? Mm-hmm. And I'm not really set on the number yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the goal is to continue to grow and, and continue to foster that expansion. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely have this feeling that I'm, I'm made for something bigger. Like there's bigger things that are happening. Um, there's bigger programs that I'm putting together in my business and there's more people out there I know I can help. Mm -hmm. And so I think as long as I'm continuing to grow, that's the goal. Yeah. Like I have to stay on that trajectory because I know there's big things for me to do in this world. And there's people that I haven't even met yet whose life is going to change my life and the other way around. And so I'm, I'm so blessed and grateful for all of that and, and everything that we're all going to create together with it. So so 2020 is going to be a really exciting and monumental year, even with some of the tough, you know, things that we've all been through in 2020, which, Woo. yeah. Yeah. I was saying to a <laughs> class yesterday, I was like, can y'all believe that January 2020 was this year? <laughs> like, like, like I look back on life pre-COVID and I'm like, whoa, like Mm -hmm. the amount of freedom that we had that we took for granted, I think is astounding to me. 
and mm-hmm. and then through all everything i think um there have been a ton of blessings and and one of those one of those things is definitely a commitment to and i and just based on how you answered that i feel it too just a a commitment to expanding leading yes expanding my capacity um it's just much more fun that way i had to make a decision about where to put my time and energy with my company mm-hmm. and and i pick the i pick the tougher road that's going to make me grow a lot more you know i would expect I, nothing less susan hyatt that's more fun <laughs> that's more fun but it's like it, you know it's like it, it's not a decision like i don't ever make the easy money decision mm-hmm. but money follows growth yes. yes it does and it follows like the the tougher you know, it's like you grow the most through the harder times Mm -hmm. and that's where all the opportunity is. Mm -hmm. Even though our brain's like, no, really? Can't you just go in the other direction? (laughs) Just this one time? (laughs) Right. Not another fucking thing. (laughs) That's right. Like, really? Don't even even come at me with the killer hornets and that somebody, there was a news story about a python in somebody's toilet. I'm like, listen, 2020. (laughs) You better stop that shit. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, really? But, oh, but. my God. So if somebody listening to this wants to upgrade their money mindset, what's like the piece of homework that you want to assign to our listeners that they can't mm. avoid? Yeah. So this is a little nugget I learned from you, Susan Hyatt, which you would always ask me. So first I would say, you know, take a pause in your life and think about the thing that you could do in your, if you're talking about business owners, the things you could do in your business that are, that are going to bring you joy that you're really passionate about. I think one of the blessings and curses of entrepreneurs is we're very creative and there's like all the things we have all these ideas all the time. And so we can get pulled in all these directions. But when you stop to think about like, what is the thing, the one thing that you could focus on that would bring you the most joy that you would enjoy doing the most thing that you're passionate about. Um, it's sometimes we could get really clear on what that is. So I would say, you know, take a minute and think about where could I have my biggest impact? Like what would be the most fun? What would I be most passionate about? Um, and then for me, I think one of the, the biggest things that allowed me to gain the most success in my business and with my clients was I got really clear on what what were the results that I was going to help them get? And then I focused in on making my offers around those things. Mm-hmm. So for the longest time, I just did one-on-one coaching for years and I got really good at coaching and I got really good at helping people get those results. And I was, my husband would always be like, who's more excited about their results, Jess, you or them? I'm like, probably me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, for sure you. But I was able to really help them get those results And then I would add things on. So I started adding on groups. But I think when we can focus in, we can expand. Like all the creativity around that expands. Mm -hmm. We help people understand why it's valuable. We can help paint the vision for them. Um, And we can really go in and share it from a very centered place that knowing that whatever amount of money that we're getting in return for giving this service, it will never outweigh what they're getting, Mm -hmm. like everything they're becoming and all they're going to create is always going to be bigger. And I think when you can get your mind into that place, there's this compulsion to tell everybody about what you're doing. Like you just want to bring everybody into that fold. And I think that focus and that clarity on what you're offering and what is that one thing that you're going to go out there and talk to people about really that's the, that's the game changer. I think we fracture our energy and then we're all over the place. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I ask everybody this, I want to know what something either free or next to free that helps you feel rich free or next to free. That helps me feel rich. That's a really good question. So mine, I always, people always laugh at me and this was pre-COVID, is toilet paper. Like I literally, 
have a six month supply like in my basement of toilet paper. I don't understand why that was a thing during COVID, honestly, but I was all set. But it's like having an abundance of toilet paper and Nespresso pods and vanilla scented candles make me feel rich. That's really, that is a good one. I would say <laughs> the thing that makes me feel rich is my, he, I have this plug-in heating pad that has a timer. Oh. And literally when you put this thing on, like before you get into your bed, you feel like you are at the spa. It that, is the best $30. Funny. A $30 heating pad you turn yeah. on before you get into bed. I love it. Yeah. And you can kind of like bring it with you, plug it in whenever you want, wherever you are. But there was something about like the warmth and I don't know, it feels so luxurious to be yes. like, this thing. <laughs> yes, I love this answer. Okay. So I do have all the link love in the show notes, but where can people hang out with you, find you? Yeah. So I have a website. It's mm -hmm. Jessica Miller, B-N-Y, B as in boy, N as in Nancy, Y as in yo-yo, all one word because my company's brand new you. Mm -hmm. .com. Um, and then I also have a Facebook group um, called Brand New You, where I invite anyone who would like to be part of that, wants to learn about mindset, money, and just be with an awesome group of people. Um, that's a Facebook group, and you can find me by just putting Brand New You, Jessica Miller, in the search. Brand New You. Well, I love it. Thank you so much for your time, as always. This has been amazing. I can't wait to see what you go get next. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here.